Hey, 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 and welcome to Hume Weir Motor Racing Circuit, located just off Bone Killer Road, built on the Victorian side of the Murray River at Lake Hume near Albury Wodonga in Australia. This is one of those quirky circuits. It's a circuit no longer used. It was originally built from a disused quarry which was left over from the construction of the Hume Weir which had taken place back in 1919 through to 1931. The circuit saw its first race on the 1st of November 1959 when it was still an unsealed racing circuit and at that stage it was only 0.8 of a mile in length. In 1960 the dirt circuit was sealed and increased to a length of one mile. So I've jumped in my four degree of freedom motion sim platform. We're gonna do a few laps of Hume Weir and we're gonna talk about the rich history of Hume Weir and how it contributed positively to motorsport in Australia. For anybody who's interested in building their own motion simulator platform, you can click on this link here, which will take you to the first of my tutorial series on how to build a four degree of freedom motion sim. And if you like my content, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Today I've recreated a race that took place at Hume Weir on Sunday the 12th of June 1966. I'm doing this via the digital domain and I'm doing it in a racing simulator game that's quite an old title now called GTR2 and this version of GTR2 that I own has had a mod added to it. It's had a mod called the Power and the Glory mod, which adds touring cars from the 60s and the 70s to the base GTR2 game. For anybody who's interested, or for those that don't know about GTR2, this is an older title now, circa 2006, 2007, but with a few graphics tweaks that are easy to do, and there's plenty of information about how to do these particular tweaks online, YouTube channels, etc., you can make GTR2 look pretty good today in 2024. And I picked this up the other day on Steam for 11 bucks AUD. And the Power and the Glory mod is absolutely free. You just download it and install it into the GTR2 folder, and you have a whole suite of car packs from the 60s and the 70s. GTR2 uses the G-Motor for its physics engine, the same found in R-Factor and Race 07. It's a really good physics motor, and the physics come through really, really well in my Fenatec direct drive steering wheel. Really good force feedback, and the motion I get through my motion simulator platform is really accurate and crisp. It's a really good title for a motion sim, and a direct drive steering wheel. Let's get back to the history of Hume Weir Circuit. So it was the Albury District Car Club that eyed the site with a view to establishing a small circuit, and it certainly was going to be small given the tight confines from the lake to the main road. Naturally, being a disused quarry, the topography was less than charming and the bare earth and rocks tended to create an oven-like environment on hot days. The track that was opened with a car meeting on November 2nd, 1959 was only partially sealed, but the struggling club received a welcome benefactor in the form of a successful businessman and racing driver, Len Lukey, who provided £4,500, around £9,000 uh, in today's dollars for a hot mix bitumen surface which was completed in 1960 holding its first meeting on March 27. Club members toiled around the clock to lay the surface which was completed in just 11 days. Lukey also provided a bridge across the Twin Straits and a control tower which replaced an old double-decker bus as the operations centre. At just 1.42 kilometres or 0.8 miles in length, the circuit was short and tight and provided the unique spectacle, at least in Australia, of having racing vehicles passing through a narrow cutting in both directions, separated by a barrier of concrete and steel armco. Crucially, the circuit was situated just inside the Victorian border, which meant it was not subject to the draconian conditions of the New South Wales Speedway Act, with which it had no chance of complying. Q 
Hume Weir circuit more than likely would not be on the radar of international racing enthusiasts, but the track did host the Australian International Races back in the summer of 1961, which saw the likes of Jack Brabham, Roy Savadori and others race at Hume Weir. It was Jack Brabham that won the 1961 Craven A International in his Cooper T53 Climax. It was in this race that Jack Brabham set the lap record on the day. The track saw lots of touring car action and it was a real hotbed for drivers from Sydney and Melbourne who loved to travel to Hume Weir for a break from the city, for some good country life and they really liked the enjoyable quirky layout of the track. So it really attracted some big names in motor racing in Australia at the time. Drivers that frequently visited Hume Weir were the likes of Rusty French, Ian Gahagan, Alan Hamilton, Paul Trevithan, John Gourlay, Tim Trevor, Dennis Geary, Peter Brock, Alan Moffat, and the list goes on. Hume Weir hosted the 1973 Australian Formula 2 Championship Round 1 on the 3rd of June. The winner that day was Leo Gahagan in a Barana 272 Ford. The next year, 1974, saw the Australian Formula 2 Championship Round 1 take place at Hume Weir on the 16th of June. Again, Leo Gahagan was the winner in a Barana 274 Ford on this occasion. The next year, 1975, the Australian Formula 2 Championship Round 3 took place at Hume Weir on the 15th of June. And Alfredo Costanzo won this day in a Barana 274 Ford. 1976 saw the Australian Formula 2 Championship Round 2 on the 13th of June take place at Hume Weir. The winner that day was Peter Lana in an Elfin 700. And in 1976, the Australian Sports Car Championship Round 4 on the 26th of September took place at Hume Weir. The winner on that day was Alan Hamilton in a Porsche Turbo. Like so many other racing circuits in Australia at this time, it wasn't very long in Hume Weir's existence that it was under pressure financially. It was actually in the dire straits. It was in trouble as early as 1973 and the circuit came under extreme pressure by CAMS to make extensive modifications. These included widening the track to a minimum of 30 feet, relocating the pits and widening the cutting separating the two straights. With no hope of complying, the Albury District Car Club surrendered the track's CAMS licence after its June the 10th, 1973 meeting. Thereafter, the track only hosted cars on a club basis and there was little investment in the maintenance of infrastructure, which began to crumble away. Renowned Australian race car driver and successful businessman Bob Jane acquired the lease to the circuit and it was keenly hoped that this would lead to a much needed makeover, but it never happened. Eventually, Jane assigned the lease to the Benalla Auto Club. But with the promotion of their own circuit at Winton to look after, Hume Weir was neglected and has succumbed to the elements of time. The final meeting at Hume Weir was staged on the 27th of March, 1977. The overall lap record set by Alfredo Costanzo driving a Barana to this day stands at 42.7 seconds. It was established during the third round of the 1975 Australian Formula 2 Championship, which took place on the 15th of June, 1975. Hume Weir was occasionally used as a special stage for historic car rallies but the glory days were over. Just to put the final nail in the coffin, the northern end of the track, Scrub Corner as it was known, was obliterated in the 1990s when a nearby dam wall was raised. 
Today, there is barely anything left to link the area with its motor racing past, and the site is once again what it was prior to 1959, a disused quarry. Thank you so much for tuning in to Australian Race History. And until I see you in the next video, you guys stay safe, stay healthy, and take it easy out there.